Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm super excited for tonight because tonight we're going to be capturing M42, the Great Orion Nebula. This is a super bright and easy to capture nebula that can be found in the constellation Orion. It can be found as the middle point of light in the middle of his sword. And we're going to be capturing it tonight with my Canon SL2 and a 250mm lens on my tracking mount. I'm just getting ready to get set up now, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, find a good place where I can capture it, where I know it's going to be up high and visible as much time as I can get throughout the night. So in order to see where my target's going to be in the night sky, I'm using Sky Safari Pro's compass mode to kind of estimate at about what time Orion's going to be high enough for me to image. So it looks like about 12 in the morning, this is going to be a late one, it'll be up just above those treetops there and it should follow them westward throughout the night and hopefully stay above them and avoid the chimney. So the other issue I'm going to be facing tonight is trying to polar align through all these trees here. Because of where I have to be in order to get Orion high enough above the trees to image, I have to pull our line through this little hole in this big tree here. It makes things a little interesting and just means I can't really set up until it's dark. So what I usually do in this situation is I'll level out the tripod, make sure it's pointing as north as I can get it, and then have a little look through the polar scope here. That'll kind of give me a rough idea of whether I'll have to move the mount or not before I can actually pull our line. Right, it's a little after midnight now. It's a calm, clear, crisp night here. Real quiet. And uh, everything's set up. I've got the mount ready to go. Didn't have to move it. Ended up uh, being able to pull our line just fine. I've already got the dew heater on there just in case. And I think I'm going to go ahead and slew to M42. And we'll get started imaging. It gets a little creepy being out here this late at night on a uh, late fall or winter night because all of the bugs and other animals that make sound during the summer, they're all gone. So the only sound is the distant highway or people's air conditioning units kicking on or off. So I ended up having to refocus a few times, but now I've got Orion framed up and it's all in focus. And I don't see any dew forming on the lens right now, so I shouldn't have to plug in the dew heater. And we should be good to go in for the night. Alright, so we're back on the upstairs desktop streaming Nina from my laptop outside. And we're going to go ahead and plate solve this to ensure my image is perfectly centered in case I ever want to shoot the exact same framing again. Let's give that a stretch. Actually, you can already see some nebulosity there. And it was synced, so it should be perfectly centered. Alright, it looks like plate solving has finished, so I'm going to go ahead and try out a 60 second exposure and see what we can get out of that. I'm going to be shooting at a low ISO, probably about 400, to get more dynamic range in there. And we're going to go ahead and take that and see what we get. Alright, here comes our first image. And there it is. That's why it's called the Great Orion Nebula. This is a single frame. It's always amazing to see that come up. And over here we have the Running Man Nebula. And you can see the main Orion Nebula actually extends all the way out to there. We'll pull a lot of that out in processing. So I think now that that's pretty centered up, we can go ahead and start our sequence. I'm going to be taking probably a little less than 360 second exposures tonight. And I may throw in some dark frames if I have time. There's actually a couple satellites in here. There's one there and then there's another one right here crossing through the frame. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start the sequence and see what we can get out of this. Should be finishing up around 615 for the 300, but I'm sure it'll hit a tree or go behind the house before that. 
we'll get what we can. So I have my Meridian Flip coming up in about seven minutes here. And what that is, is the way an equatorial mount works, it has to flip over at the Meridian in order to avoid crashing into the tripod and still be able to continue tracking. And I like to stay up for that because the way it's supposed to work is it flips, plate solves, and it goes back to the target on its own and starts imaging again. But that's rarely how it actually happens, so I like to stay up and make sure, kind of babysit the mount. Looks like I came out just in time, the mount's already flipping. Just like to supervise things and make sure it doesn't hit anything. I'm sure I'll have to refocus and I'll, while I'm at it I'll probably just take the dew heater off because I checked dew point and it's not supposed to get above outside temperature. Nina has this really cool pop-up that comes up during the, the uh, meridian flip and tells you exactly what's going on. Just plate solving back to the target right now. And that little beep telling me it was doing another little resetting. I don't think I'm actually going to bother messing with the dew heater and the focus because after the flip it actually does look like they stayed pretty well in focus. So I've got a couple hundred images left to take. I'm going to go ahead and leave this running for the night. So everything is finished up now. Orion started going behind the trees at about 5 in the morning and it looks like the sequence stopped shortly after. I'm going to take some dark frames now. These are just images that are taken at the same settings as my lights but with the lens cap and viewfinder covered to keep light from getting in there. And that's done because we're trying to capture the fixed noise pattern on the camera and we're going to later subtract that from the final image to reduce noise. So I ended up with 290 images, but capturing them is only half the work. Now I'm going to sort through them all and get rid of any images with stars trailing because my polar alignment was a little off and my mount doesn't track that great to begin with. But other than that, I'll remove any images where trees or other foreground objects were in the frame and then I'll throw them all in Deep Sky Stacker and combine all that into one final image. I ended up with 152 light frames. I'm going to combine all these together in Deep Sky Stacker in order to reduce noise and get us a higher signal noise ratio that will make it easier to process out the faint details in the nebula. I'm also including some dark frames which are another noise reducing measure, and then flat frames which are required to remove the darkening around the edges of the frame that makes the image much easier to process. <laughs> 